Hey, what's up guys? Today we're talking about the highs and lows of type seven, um, or we might say the path of integration and disintegration, or you could say what sevens look like under stress and what they look like when they're healthy and well adjusted. And so um, obviously I am a seven. I've, you guys who've watched these videos probably know that by now I'm a seven wing six. Um, and um, I sometimes in these videos can be kind of hard on sevens. I get responses back from you guys that um, you feel like I'm hard on sevens and, and maybe not hard enough on twos. And it's probably because I am a seven and so I tend to see the worst uh, or the most frustrating parts of my personality and my wife is a two and so I tend to, you know, maybe be a little more uh, thoughtful about that, that number. Um, so sevens, you know, are called the enthusiast, we're called the adventurers, um, or sometimes I think called the epicures, and there's all kinds of names that they use for us, but sevens by and large are a fear type. In five, six, and seven, you know, are all moving away from fear. Fives kind of feel like that if they can understand enough information or understand and be, you know, adequately prepared in the sense of being adept and informed, then they can relieve their fears by going internal and um, sort of observing the world rather than living in the world. Um, kind of take that spectator mode and they can relate to the world through their information and through their mastery of that information. Sixes are the most obvious fear types, I think. Sixes, um, you know, want to be prepared. They're worst case scenario thinkers. And so they tend to think if I'm in the right groups, associate with the right people. Um, if I, you know, if I keep my eyes on the horizon and watch for all threats and I follow all the guidelines and the rules or push my fear down, then I'll be, I'll be safe. I'll be okay. Um, and then sevens tend to just evade fear. And sevens are not usually aware until they've spent some time with the Enneagram. They're not usually aware that, that they are afraid of anything. They don't, they don't feel the fear, um, but they do try to evade uh, the things that would get, make, them, make them fearful. They're afraid, first of all, of being bored or being stuck in uh, uh, boredom or stuck in limited options and you can see this in the behavior of most sevens because when things get boring, you'll see them start to intensify the situation. You know, they will start picking up, um, you know, objects around them like this and they'll start opening and closing or, you know, pushing on pin caps. They'll start rocking back and forth, fidgeting, you know, opening and closing things as they're talking. Um, chewing on their glasses. I mean, there's all kinds of ways in which sevens reveal that sense of frustration with um, things becoming boring or their options becoming limited. And they'll seek to up the energy or intensify the moment with humor. They'll tend to deflect uh, painful feelings or painful emotions or sadness. Uh, they'll tend to evade it or deflect it. They'll tend to evade authorities by befriending authority figures. Um, they don't usually want to attack things direct. Now, seven, eight, seven wing eights are a lot more direct than seven wing sixes. Seven wing sixes try and play it safe, try to get along with everybody and are, are a little more careful, I think. All right, so what, what are the paths of integration and disintegration? Well, in this series, I've been using the cabin analogy. And what that means is, is for the seven, the cabin in the woods is, you know, the seven cabin and everything it means to be a seven. And on both sides of that cabin, down each path is a neighbor. And you're probably closer to one neighbor than you are to the other. And you tend to rely on one more than the other, at least in certain situations. Um, balance on both of these neighbors will make you a much healthier uh, individual. So for the seven, one neighbor is the six. Okay. And the six, remember, is all about being connected, all about being safe, all about forecasting all problems and problem solving and planning and all that. So the seven who goes down and visits from that neighbor or borrows from that neighbor, uh, it can really help that seven a lot because 
sevens can kind of get in over their heads pretty quick and their desire to essentially be hedonistic and pleasure seekers um, you know sevens could get themselves in a world of trouble they could get they could rack up a, a pretty large credit card bill so to speak well that six neighbor is going to help you be cautious and say hey you know before you do this before you go out and you you know sell your um, your car in order to buy jet skis you might want to consider that uh, you might need that car and before you go to Las Vegas and you uh, spend all your money, you might want to remember that you're going to need groceries. And before you spend your all of your lunch money on Monday at the, uh, you know, at the 7-Eleven or at the gas station on Slurpees and and candy and and hot dogs, you might want to remember that you're going to need lunch money all week. And so that six wing could really help the seven, you know, look into the future and foresee possible problems with their behavior and then sort of slow them down and help to be more cautious. There's been many times in my life, especially when I was a teenager, that the seven uh, in me has been helped significantly by that six, that warning, you know, of the six. Like if you do this, you know, if you go ahead and you do this, you're going to hurt somebody's feelings or you're going to get yourself in detention or you might get yourself expelled or you, and so that voice of caution can really help the, the seven. So that's a good neighbor to lean on, a good neighbor to benefit from. On the other hand, down the other end of the street, you know, the other end of the path, there's the eight wing. And that eight neighbor is another good neighbor for the seven to learn to borrow from. The eight energy is the energy, you know, of standing on your own two feet and making your own decisions and going with your intuition and keeping people's problems in their own yard and out of my yard. And so that eight wing can be helpful to the seven because sevens uh, can sometimes, you know, be pleasers. They can be, try to be too people pleasing. And part of that is out of the fact that sevens know that if they, if they come at people directly, if they come at authority figures directly, those authority figures could could make our life miserable. They could schedule us when we don't want to be scheduled. They could load us down with tedious labor. So sevens tend to try to, at least on the surface, try to please people in order to kind of evade them and be able to do what we want. That eight energy, you know, helps sevens, you know, to uh, to own their emotions, own their feelings, own their decisions to uh, look people in the eyes and have good boundaries with them, um, to, uh, to basically, in a sense, you might say, grow up and not, because remember, think about it like this, the seven is the proverbial child that doesn't want to grow up, okay? Peter Pan, you know, is a seven. And right next to the seven is this eight energy, which is the proverbial grown up. It's, it's, it is the energy that, it is the number that felt like they had to grow up too early. Okay, think Annie on uh, Little Orphan Annie, right? She's an eight. You know, she had to grow up too early because of what life did to her. It put her in a position where she had to get her, you know, her fists up and she had to be able to protect herself. And so that, that seven that doesn't want to grow up, that wants to remain a child, could benefit greatly from this eight energy right next to them that says, hey, you gotta, you gotta pay your bills and you've got to uh, respect yourself and you've gotta stand up to bullies and you've gotta work a full day's you know, work and you've got to take care of your house and you've gotta take responsibility for yourself and you've gotta own your own choices and decisions and all of that is right next to the eight. And those are two great neighbors to have. And I've said this throughout the series, you know, uh, and I'll say it again. If we could learn to, if we could learn to depend equally on both of these neighbors in a balanced way, all of us, no matter what type you are, you would find yourself being a much more healthy, much more balanced individual. Most of us lean heavily on one at, at the exclusion of the other. And so learning to balance and, and know when to, um, to lean on either one of those neighbors could really be helpful to all of us. Now, at the bottom of the hill is your outhouse, okay? And that's where you go when you're overwhelmed, when, you're, when you need to relieve yourself. That's where you go uh, is at the bottom of the hill to that number of stress, okay? So for the seven, that is uh, Enneagram type one. 
So where the seven goes when they're under stress or when they're highly stressed or when they're unhealthy or when they've got themselves in deep and the deadlines come and now the papers are due, um, you know, they've offended people with their, you know, uh, carefree lifestyle, with their carefree choice of words, and now they've got, you know, responsibility to own up to all this, you'll see sevens under stress go to one. Now think, what is type one? One is the uh, reformer, the perfectionist. Okay, one is the no-nonsense dad energy of you got to get your work done before you can play outside. Okay, that's the one. That's the way the one thinks. Be a good person. Do what you should. Do what you ought. Do what needs to be done. Sevens primarily are not thinking, you know, in their in their nature to think, I need to do my work first and then I'll um, go out and play. Sevens are going to want to play first and work later. Eat your dessert first and then, you know, um, eat your vegetables if you have to. So sevens under stress, you know, when they find out that that the the bills have to be paid or you know they've got a mouthful of cavities or you know they've isolated themselves from their friends because of their thoughtless actions and thoughtless words or hedonistic selfish ways you'll see sevens go down the hill to the outhouse and finally accept responsibility for what they've done finally accept responsibility for what they've said and now do what they ought to do they do what they should do apologize get their homework done go outside and finally go out and rake those leaves and cut that grass and get your paper turned in and often it's not until the last minute it's not until you know their charm won't work anymore and they can't evade through all of their humor and all of their, um, you know, um, whatever methods they might use to evade um, by their palsing around, you know, or palling around with you. When they can't, when that won't work anymore, then you'll see them actually buckle down um, and finish the job. But it's probably something they've avoided until there's no longer time to avoid avoid it or until they get that burst of energy you know it can come like that too like you know just one day you get your coffee and you just feel motivated and then when you feel enthusiastic about getting that assignment done then it's amazing how fast sevens can get stuff done sevens are in a thinking group so they're very fast thinkers and can be quite productive and fast workers but it usually is on their terms. It's usually when they have that enthusiastic drive, then they feel like they're in the zone. And when they're in that zone and they're enthusiastic, then they can get a lot done. Um, okay, so sevens under stress. Well, they become more responsible. One is like the most responsible type on the Enneagram. Okay, it's a police officer, it's the military. Uh, soldier it's the dad energy it is the what needs to be done let's go do what needs doing right and so when sevens are under stress you'll see them become responsible they'll wrestle with um, and become much more responsible when they're in that place of stress and become more critical and more judgmental sevens by nature are not judgmental people it's kind of like let live and let live it is kind of the motto of a seven right but when sevens are under stress, they become more harsh, more critical, more judgmental, which is what ones, you know, which is their, their challenge is ones tend to be very harsh and critical with themselves and sometimes with others. You'll see sevens under stress become more rigid and more methodical. Methodical meaning not only like planning and organizing and detailed and all that, but also methodical in like just going through the motions. It just has to get done. Somebody's got to show up. I said I would show up on work day, so now I got to show up on work day and I'll just go through the motions. All the joy is gone. Sevens, when they're healthy, bring joy into the world. I mean, I've made that my mission now is like, just bring joy to the world. Okay, but but when they're, when they're under a place of stress, you'll see the joy diminish and that sense of duty take over. That duty of the one takes over. And now the seven's doing what needs to be done but they kind of aren't doing it with joy anymore. They're just begrudgingly, you know, doing what 
they agreed to do or what you know they promised to do or what uh, you know they've put off until they can't put it off any longer um, you'll see sevens at that point become very agitated uh, because to them it feels like all their freedoms are gone now and now they're in a limited you know confined uh, draining quicksand frustrated you know that's what they're gonna feel they're gonna feel all that you know, I can't go do whatever I want. I've got to go to the doctor and take the kids to the doctor. I got to sit in a waiting room. When when sevens are healthy, they can make anything enjoyable. It's amazing. Um, I've seen it not just in myself, but I see it in other sevens. Um, they they can just they can just bring lighthearted humor and joy into any experience. Washing dishes, sitting in a doctor's office, um, you know, lobbies, whatever it is. You'll see sevens just. Bring in laughter and happiness and, and joy everywhere they go. But when they're under stress, sevens can just suck all the joy right out of a room, right out of the relationship. And it's just like everything gets deflated around them because they're agitated, because they're frustrated that their options are limited, their freedoms are limited, and now they've got to take responsibility. And, you know, it's like um, they're, they're like we're stuck in quicksand. Um, You'll see their sense of humor diminish, and instead, instead of being humorous, more sarcastic than humorous. Um, thinking becomes more black and white instead of gray. Naturally, sevens would think in gray, like, I can see your point, I guess that makes sense, who am I to say? Sevens tend to have that kind of orientation to life, but when they're frustrated, hurt, angry, bitter, bored you know whatever it is uh they'll be more black and white you know more frustrated like how come how come it's my day off and we don't have plans how come we're not going anywhere how come we have to do a doctor's appointment today this doesn't make any sense why can't we do this some other day you know it's beautiful outside you know it's friday night why are we home on friday night we could be out doing a million things i don't but seven sometimes when you sit down and ask them what do they want to do you know they can have a hard time because they kind of always want to do what they're not doing, you know? And so if you go play putt-putt golf with them, they might be frustrated playing putt-putt golf because, well, we could be bowling. Take them bowling and they could be frustrated. Why are we going bowling when there's a movie? We could go to the movies. Sit down in the movies. They're looking at their phone because they're bored in the movie. When is this over? When's the next thing? And sevens can perpetually be moving to the next thing and not be present to life. Listen, I've learned this the hard way. The Enneagram, if it's done nothing, has helped me to just be present to life. And you'll hear me say it at the end of every video, be present to life. Because as a seven, I have found that so many times in my own life, I can be so focused on what's next and so focused on what we could be doing and what we should be doing and how this could be made better. And we're out on a boat and isn't this fun? But yeah, if we had jet skis, this could be more fun. And if our jet skis had radios on them, they'd be even more fun. And it, it, it just never ends. And the sin of the seven is what? Gluttony. And that's what gluttony is. It's like, I need one more thing. I need one more experience. I need to finish my collection. And once I get that one more item and put it in the rest of the collection, then it's gonna be awesome and then I'll be happy. But then you just keep going more and more and more and more and it's never enough. Well, you guys said I can be hard on sevens and maybe that's what this looks like right now. You know, it's, it's the things within myself I've learned to observe. And that's really what it's about is just observing that when I'm in this place, look, I'm in the outhouse and life in the outhouse, at the end of the day, just stinks. And how long do I want to stay here? How long do I want to be upset, you know, that that my plans aren't working out or that somebody's limiting my freedom? How long do I want to stay here in this outhouse? Nobody's going to have fun with me in this outhouse. Nobody's going to come visit me when I've got this attitude like this. And look, I was on put on this earth as a seven to bring joy, you know. And I would say as a Christian to bring the joy of the Lord, you know, to bring bring God's joy into this world. But I can't bring joy when I'm so agitated, frustrated, and upset, um, and depressed, and sevens can get depressed. Um, and so you got to recognize that that's where I'm at. I'm in this outhouse, and I don't want to stay here. I want to make my way back up. And, and we can. We don't have to stay in this outhouse. We can decide to, to become healthy, you know, and to take some steps, open the door and come out and take some steps back up the hill, back where we belong back up to the cabin where we belong. Sevens on that low side in that outhouse, the positivity goes away. They, uh, they can begin to try to run faster and faster away from their problems. Um, so not only could they you know, become frustratedly 
frustratedly more productive, but they can also become more agitatedly fleeing of their responsibilities and just decide that they don't want to take responsibility. Sevens might become more aggressive when they're under stress. They might, uh, they could even like start to go into like, um, more into like a fantasy world or a fantasy reality, you know, just to try to avoid as much as they can coming to terms or coming to grips with the way things really are um, in life to move away from anything that uh, might be sad or you know uh, dark um, you know and they might just kind of like retreat into a false positivity you know like a fake um, positivity because they just don't want to face the pain or the uh, the harsh realities that are in front of them they could become more aggressive um, focusing more and more on what brings pleasure and so they might become you know um, addicted or kind of f fall peril to their addictions I think somewhere I read you know sevens tend to be the most addicted type uh, and it comes from gluttony you know to try to fill that void or to try to numb the pain of the emptiness and so sevens are going to reach out for something external to try to uh, to, to handle life when it's difficult or when life you know is challenging so that's the outhouse and again if you find yourself there just observe that and then decide I don't have to stay here I can make my way back up to a more positive more healthy place so sevens can also move to uh, and again that's seven at one sevens can move to five which is think of the apple orchard you know at the top of the hill um, so the cabin's in the middle, the outhouse is at the bottom, and up at the top of the hill is the fruit trees. And sevens can make their way with a little bit of effort, you know, they'll make their way up to the top of that hill where they can benefit from the best of type five. So five, of course, is the observer or the investigator. And fives are very rational, logical oriented people who love to dig deep into information and extract and ration, uh, extract information and then you know, um, uh, study and learn and grow. So sevens, when they're healthy, will be learning and growing people who will find um, immense pleasure in digging deep into information that they then become enthusiastic about. And then they, you know, become experts, so to say, or, you know, somewhat of an expert in different topics that uh, they then love to share and broadcast. Uh, they're not stingy with it like fives might be. They're not stingy with that information. They become very enthusiastic and passionate about that information and also tend to make other people passionate you know, about, uh, about that information. Um, on the high side, sevens you know, can slow down. When they go to five, they can slow down. They can be happy with less. They don't, they don't necessarily need more and more and more They're, they get rid of that gluttonous you know nature and they tend to be satisfied with less fives are very satisfied with less and with the basics of life um, they uh, recognize that they're distracting themselves away from what's important and so they can bring themselves back to reality steady their for their focus and their attention if there's one thing that sevens need to do it's focus Sevens like to stay on the surface. They like to skim across the surface. They like their relationships to skim across the surface. Going deep can become problematic. Going deep with people is going to take time, effort, energy, suffering, hardship. You're going to have to pay attention to people. And sevens like to keep things on the surface. They like surface knowledge, surface information, surface relationships. But the reality is, is not a lot of things, you know, are meant to be appreciated at the surface level. To really appreciate life, you have to be able to stay with something. You have to be able to invest yourself in something. And so when sevens move to a healthier place, they become more focused, more diligent, more determined, um, more able to sit with pain, more able to, um, to endure and persevere. And uh, they find that their life becomes much richer and that the, the lights become much lighter as they learn to endure darkness. As they learn to sit with the darkness and with the rain and the thunder, it just makes them appreciate the sunlight and the sunshine all the more. Instead of reaching out for more and more and more, they're able to experience all of their emotions, even the darker ones, so that they are better able to um, be satisfied by, by the positive emotions without having to amp up that energy. 
Uh, sevens learn to feel all the way. They learn to experience their feelings and to sit with their feelings and to accept their feelings. Um, things like anger and pain and sadness and depression, they're able to sit with that and observe it and recognize that it's not going to kill them to feel a little bit of boredom or a little bit of tedious or a little bit of, of, of sadness. They don't feel like they have to distract themselves. They feel like they can focus more. They can work things out and find resolutions. They can go deeper in their relationships. And this is all what makes life more you know, livable, more, re more rich, is being able to go deeper. Um, they're willing to experience the rest of life, the dark sides of life. And again, the dark only makes the light shine brighter. Um, sevens, when they go to uh, five, become more focused, more depth, more understanding, um, more rich meaning to life. They consume less. They decide that maybe less really is more and they don't need so much uh, of other things external to numb or to fill. Uh, they become more still. Uh, think about a seven being still. That is so hard and challenging and difficult for sevens to just be still. Think about Robin Williams or Jim Carrey just being still. Uh, or Jimmy Fallon being, being still. Um, for a seven, that's, that sounds terrible. Um, to not amp up the moment, to not try to bring levity into every situation, to just accept things the way they are, and if they're sad, to let yourself cry and feel sadness, to become more contemplative, uh, to focus more on details and not just surface level, to become even more introverted, introspective, and shy. Uh, these are good things. These are necessary things for a seven. And when you recognize that you're growing, um, when you recognize that these things are becoming more uh, a normal part of your life, you're growing and you're benefiting and your life becomes richer and you're more able to live in joy and bring joy into your world, into your environment. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful to you. I hope you've been encouraged by it. As always, be present to life. I've already told you what that means for the seven. If you're not a seven, you just live with a seven or are trying to understand a seven, um, you can help them by, by not always expecting them to be up, by not always expecting them to raise you know, the energy of the room and just let them be themselves and let that be enough. Um, the rest of you guys, you know, being present to life may look a little different for you, but try not to, um, to always be reaching for something else that you can't enjoy what's right in front of you. Tomorrow's going to be great. Tomorrow's going to be great. But today is great. And really all we have is today. Tomorrow is, you know, a hope, a promise. But every day we live, we live in today. And so let yourself get out of that outhouse and just uh, enjoy what is and bring joy into whatever you're doing. In other words, don't just focus on doing fun things, but focus on doing all things with fun. Do all things with that energy and with that joy. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you and blessings.